um, and the other um, industries in Nollywood that uh, the, 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 the census board is uh, um, criticizing, Aquabom content has always been a clear cut moral content. Most of our films, like, uh, uh, and we, we've also been touching our history. Recently, we did a film called 1929 and trying to tell the world, do you redirect the history that the Amba Women Riot was actually not an Amba thing, it was an Opobo thing. And we did um, Breach of No Return to actually tell the world that slavery, you know, actually affected Aquaibom. We've been doing a lot of historical work and a lot of moral jobs. Uh, Enebe Francis did a job called The List, trying to also criticize this marriage long list in society. We've been doing a whole lot of good content, good jobs, good um, script, at least to correct vices, bad vices in society. All right. Yeah. Let me come back to you, uh, Honorable S.A. Now, regardless of the fact that these long list of um, storylines that borders on correcting societal ills have been mentioned by the, the director, Mr. Moses Esco, uh, do you think um, th there is something that hasn't been done that is not really putting to light the level of um, awareness that is required. Because uh, uh, l let, me, let me come from the angle of um, indecent dressing, for instance, uh, especially from the female folk. We know that the male folk are also dressing indecently. Uh, walk away from indecent dressing. You talk about drugs addiction. A lot of persons recently, I think, uh, recently the Nigerian movie industry was accused uh, for being uh, the reasons behind the high level of drug addiction in Nigeria. And the level of indecency because um, a lot of movies project smoking, drinking, and all of that. Would you be on the same note with the persons who accuse the Nigerian movie industry or not? Well, uh, anybody accusing the Nigerian movie industry uh, for putting up contents that, uh, according to them, aid um, uh, moral decadence, I, I wouldn't really, I, I wouldn't really join them. But then, uh, since we are talking about a choir bomb specifically, uh, let me say this is important to know that the movies that are done in a choir bomb, the movies, the stories that are told from a choir bomb, are, no, are stories that do not promote indecency. Yes. These are, we, are, we do stories that promote our culture, mm. stories that are very relative to us. For instance, uh, sometimes in December, November, December last year, uh, where Moses Esco produced, uh, a, 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 you know, a, a movie called um, uh, Passion of Mary Slezo. Passion of Mary Slezo, yes. the, And after that produced uh, Iron, Iron Bar. Iron Bar. Yeah. You know, these are stories that has to do with our culture. These are stories that has to do with, um, with, uh, with, with us as a people. 99.9999% yeah. of the movies done from a choir bomb do not pr promote those indecencies, yeah, yeah. do not promote those vices. We are very, very conscious of the environment we are in and we come from. A, a normal, an average of carbon person is a very decent person. Very decent. An average of carbon person, you know, he holds his culture and tradition very, very strong. Yeah. So we do not pro produce such stories that brings down the moral decadence. So I don't know where the other people they have, that's why I keep saying that you know the social media you have a choice of what to see. Yeah. You have a choice. Yeah. Because if you are from a choir bomb and you see movies from a choir bomb and you don't watch and you go watch the other ones that uh, you know that uh, people are smoking, that's what you choose it, to it's see your now. Choice. It's your, it's your choice. choice. That's yeah. what you choose to see. Because yeah. you can also you, you should have seen these other yes. ones yes. that does not promote uh, those vices. Those vices, yes. All right, thank you very much. I think this is where we're going to draw the curtain. But before we call it a wrap on today's plenary, I'll have to come back to you two for your take home on the, the, the issue of talent discovery and creation in Aquabom State. But let me come back uh, to you, our in-house analyst, uh, Mr. Trofon. You know, one of the motions we have on the floor of the house has to be with the issue uh, bordering on the person of Barrister Mikey Guinea. Over time, um, he's been back and forth with the APC to the extent that we had uh, the APC youths in Aquaibom State protesting and calling on the INEC chairman to actually take him away from Aquaibom State. And then shortly after that, we saw women in black coming uh, to also do their own side of the protest. And then we saw another group of youths calling for Igini to actually um, be allowed to stay in Aquaibom State. And then after that, he granted an interview. And uh, within the duration of that interview, he said 
uh, that the APC um, election that happened in Akwaibom State did not happen in line with uh, the, the details of the electoral law. And so uh, APC wouldn't um, have a flag bearer in the state. But as at last, uh, yesterday over the weekend, INEC chairman uh, came out to say that the name of uh, barrister, um, the name of Senator Goswell Akpabi will be seen on the list, on the ballot paper. And he also cited that um, the INEC elections or the elections of the APC in Akwaibom State has been validated. Now, uh, the issue has been between Barrister Mikey Guinea and APC. And now you recall that um, during the gubernatorial elections that happened in Akwaibom State, where we had the Kubut and the uh, Sheikh Grace Arena, uh, there were issues where INEC reportedly, Barrister Mikey Guinea has said, INEC did not monitor APC's uh, primary elections in Akwaibom State. But then APC came out to tell us that their elections at Ekobo Street was actually monitored by somebody from the national level. And over time, we've been asking the issue, is INEC divided against itself? So the first question I'm asking you this morning, going back to the declaration by INEC chairman that uh, Barrister Goswell Apabio, uh, he is actually going to be found on the ballot box, and that the APC elections in Akwaibom State has been valid by INEC. What is the fate of Barrister Mikey Guinea as the rec in Akwaibom State? Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, we must uh, first and foremost uh, remember that we have a new electoral act that is in place. Mikey Guinea, the rec of Akwaibom, was not working in, in a vacuum. So what does the, the law say? The law says that uh, Section 8413 talks about political party holding their nomination and that their nomination has to be monitored by INEC. So if APC had their nomination and it was not monitored by INEC, that same section says that the INEC has the right to reject the names if they, they did not monitor the election. So what did Mike Guinea say that was wrong? Mike Guinea did not monitor INEC led by Mike Guinea in the aquarium did not monitor. And there's no way you can bring someone from the national national INEC to come and monitor the election. It will be very wrong. It will be very wrong because he or she does not have the jurisdiction to monitor the election. And for and for the national for the INEC saying that uh, they are going to uh, file in uh, Senator Gosula like Pabio and the APC candidate for I don't think that is going to happen. It's not going to happen because Number one, the court has spoken. And what did the court say? They says wait until for a while. And if they say wait, when they say status a, a, a what do you call it? Status a status quo. Status, status, status quo, yeah. So when you say status quo, what does that mean? Status quo means that the person that was the chairman of the party before this problem started will be the chairman. And who was the chairman? Augustine Kanem. So, if this is the same thing Mike Guinea has been shouting, that, that uh, you have to have your nomination monitored by INEC and it has to be through that line. But if after that we have another uh, court ruling that said uh, my brother Stephen Togepo should be the chairman, and that is what INEC is uh, recognizing now, he simply shows that before. All right. Uh, I think at this point we try to just hold on and, and try connecting with the barrister. Hello. Good morning, barrister. Good morning. All right. Good morning, barrister. You're live on the People's Parliament on Planet 101.1 FM. Good to have you join us this morning. Good morning. Thank you. All right, barrister. Um, the first question, we recently, uh, according to an interview granted on one of the TV stations, uh, you talked about the issue of barrister Mikey Guinea in a Quibom stage. And the fact that his body language suggests he is playing partisan politics in Akwaibom State. And uh, recently, the chairman of INEC have come out to say that uh, the person of Senator Goswell Akwaibom's name will be on the ballot paper. Now, going by the reaction coming from INEC chairman and then the resident electoral commissioner in Akwaibom State, uh, how would you see uh, the terrain playing out come 2023? Uh, uh, at this point, Against INEC, challenging the position of INEC to the fact that they will not recognize him as a candidate of his party. 
Now, under the Electoral Act, if you look at Section 54 of Section 15, that section says that when a political party in the process of conducting primary does not comply with the precondition that where a political party fails to comply with the provisions of the act in the conduct of its primaries, its candidate for election shall not be included in the election for the particular position in issue. That is what section is the first of section 18 of the 2022 electoral act. In essence, that section says that a candidate shall be excluded from election where the primary that produced that candidate was not conducted in compliance with the provisions of the Electoral Act. So the question is, can INEC invoke that provision to exclude a party since their position is that the purported primary that produced him did not comply with the provisions of the Act without recourse to the court? Secondly, can we really say that the primary that produced a Fabio was in compliance with the Electoral Act? I am not convinced that the APC had met the preconditions for the conduct of a valid primary. First, under the Electoral Act, Section 8471, a political party has to give notice of this primary. Why not? I do not know when this notice was given. That is the notice of the forwarded primary where Fabio was uh, said to have been elected as a senatorial candidate. There is also the question of who monitored that primary. Did INEC monitor that primary? The REC has said INEC was not a party, party to it. And we are all aware, and I've said that before now, that Fabio bought the presidential form of the APC participated as an aspirant at the presidential primary at the APC special convention in Abuja, where he subsequently withdrew on the date of the primary to Bola Metino. So he was effectively an aspirant seeking to be the presidential flag bearer of the APC. So at what point did he now transform to become the senatorial aspirant? Of course, one can contest or seek two positions within a party. This so that person has not been elected to work. But in case so, there has to be evidence that that person has complied with the provisions of the act. Now, who voted for Akwabio at the state, at the state primary? Because the point is that APC cannot elect a candidate without a primary, a valid primary. The person that votes, who was the delegate that voted for him? When, when were they elected? Because the delegates to by Section 84, a political party adopt the system of indirect primary. A political party is required to conduct a whole a special congress to elect delegates who would ultimately vote for the aspirant. So the, the delegates who purportedly voted for Fabio, when were they elected? These are the questions. And is it not on record that APC had earlier held the primary? for the senatorial district of Ikos Ikwene and that candidate emerged from that primary. What happened to that primary? Now they are saying that, oh, there was a security report by the police which led to the cancellation of that exercise. I do not know the, how true that is. So in essence, there are some legal challenges that Akrabi has to overcome for his name or his party to be on the ballot for because it's been in the district. The way I have reservations with Mr. Mike Guinea is for him to convert his position in the manner that he has done. For example, uh, calling press conferences, going on national television, uh, speaking very in intensely, as an umpire, as umpire, I do not think it is right for him to be talking in a manner that is opposing that he has to be If you watch his body language, 
the thing to become uh, inexcusable aggression. That should not be simplified by somebody that is an officer. Why, why, why is this body language issue important? Let us say subsequently that the court says that a family should be included in the election. If, if a match guinea were to be the rake or would be the rake at that time, would you honestly say that he will approach that election with a dispassionate mind, given the public position he has already canvassed and taken? So this is, and again, I know Mike Higgins is an activist, he was an activist before he was appointed into INE. But that should not derogate from the oath of neutrality, which is what to, I think has required on that issue to the of the Mr. Alfred Smith. I am not saying that he's partisan, I am saying that the manner in which he has advanced his position is not very comfortable for me. But I must also remind us that the reason why the APC is in crisis in acquiring to be is because of impunity. It's because of impunity and factionalization. You have the us make and then fashion. Us make and then to the form from the facts available to me was validly elected at the APC Congress as the state chairman of the party. Uh, Stephen Ndroiko lost that primary. He was defeated at that primary. And as Matthew even attended that primary and spoke and addressed the delegates before he subsequently left. I make money talk that exercise. So when subsequently we heard that the citizen of Ndroiko was elected as a, a splinter or factional primary, one wonders what exactly that meant. And then we later heard that they went to court with questionable documents and the court declared him the state chairman of the party. And then of course the subsequently the leadership change took place at the national level of the APC. When you know there is an interim committee and the my money led the end of was replaced. And then they now decided to change the position of the national leadership by recognizing tacitly uh, So this is the, the genesis of the crisis. And why this background is important is because we must also understand where my Kijini is coming from. So my reservation is with the manner in which uh, he has taken uh, his reservation on the matter. All right. Uh, be before we let you go, Barrister, uh, would you agree with the aggrieved youths who are calling for the resignation of Barrister Mikey Guinea? I don't know who the aggrieved youths are because the whole thing has become very partisan now. Uh, I have also seen a statement that to be made by IPAC that uh, they are not uh, in support of this. But we know IPAC usually. In many instances, they just uh, do the bidding of the government in power. So, uh, it is not a question of resignation. What, but maybe INEC may want to ask itself, by INEC I mean the national leadership, whether given the temperament of Mike Gini, given the position he has taken, whether it will be in the best interest of the commission for him to still be involved in the electoral process in a five or whether it will be better and tidier for the integrity of the commission for him to be redeployed to some other state. I am not saying that Mike Higgini's position regarding the leadership of the APC in the state is wrong. What I am saying is that the manner in which he has articulated his position is one that gives me cause for serious concern. I am advising him to talk less, focus more on the job, and then allow the, the legal process to run its course. Let him allow the legal process to run its course. He did not enter the arena of conflict because they, there's already a strong perception in Akwaibu that uh, is sympathetic to the PDP. This may be false. I do not know whether the this is true. I am just saying there is a perception by certain section of the, the society. Conflict. It may not be true after all. Yes, it may. It may not be true, which is why I am advising him to be a bit dispassionate in his position. The way he has spoken, the way he goes about it, it, it may give him out as somebody who is who has some bitterness or vengeance uh, against uh, some political actors in the state. And because he's an, he's an umpire's umpire, 
that should not be allowed. All right, thank you very much, Barrister, for lending your voice to the issues today. We really appreciate your coming on the, t the program. A pleasure speaking with you. All right, have a nice day, Barrister. All right, so uh, that was absolutely necessary for us to get to understand the background information surrounding the whole of the issue. But going forward, um, I think I, I have to channel this to all of us present today. All of us are politicians, and we are also advocating that if mm. we have to see the acquirement of our dreams, then we all must be politically active and inclusive. Mm. Uh, let me come to you, Utrefo, before I spread to other parliamentarians in the House. Do you think that Kwaibom people will have the kind of faith they had in IDEC before all of this crisis, if these issues are not sorted out amicably before going into 2023? Mr. Speaker, I want to tell you that Aquaibum people have faith in in the rake, uh, INEC rake by Sir Mikey Guinea. Mikey Guinea, we all know, is a no nonsense uh, uh, man. Just like uh, my brother Barista in Yibere Fiong said, Mikey Guinea is on the part of the people, the part of the truth. Mikey Guinea is acting in, in accordance with the Electoral Act, Section 8413. INEC is given the power to monitor primaries. So if you if APC in Aquabum said held a primaries and that primaries was not monitored, they didn't write a letter to INEC to inform INEC that there's going to be primaries. Or even if they wrote the letter, it was a faction that was not recognized, then that means it was null and void. Mr. Speaker, we must also understand that the issue is not even who is the state chairman now. Because even if you now say that Stephen Tukekbo is the state chairman of, of APC. Would that make Stephen Tukukbo to nominate who is, a, 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 who is a candidate of the party in various positions? No. So it simply shows that uh, the party has lost it. They have lost it because uh, they had an opportunity. They would have go with one voice, one, one structure, not factionalizing the party. Because if INEC is saying the first election uh, nomination that was held in uh, Eco Equipment Central District, we monitored that one. We know of that one where we had a, a retired DIG emerging as a candidate and you are now saying you held another one a few days after or a day before they close the they close the date for uh, party nominations it simply shows that uh, uh, it's impunity it's like uh, it's like you are not informed of the new electoral act all right uh th th that's the size of what we're going about to take at this point in time but when we come back parliamentarians you have the opportunity to uh, call in and make your contributions and the number to call is 0902-223-1011 or 0817-624-8565. The number again, 0902-223-1011 or 0817-624-8565. Right about now, we'll jump out and take the BBC Pigeon News. And when we return, the People's Parliament will continue to stay with us. It's still the plenary session this beautiful morning, the morning on the People's Parliament, coming to you live on Planet 101.1 FM. Let's kick start with uh, talking to some of the parliamentarians. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the People's Parliament. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, parliamentarian. Good morning, the guests in the studio. My solution, good morning. Moses, good Ni morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, it's been a, long, been a while, you. brother. You, you, you really don't just these two issues we have in, the, in plenary this morning. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I commend you guys. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I am the friend Kenya calling from you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to first of all take, take on the issue of my beginning. Mr. Speaker, I could remember in my infant days, uh, my father, when we return from school, my father will call us, go and take siesta, later on take your books and read. We will be inside seeing other children playing. And we used to see our father so strong as a very hard man, and we, we, we were so scared. But at another time, Mr. Speaker, we didn't know that he was doing us good. It is only when we grew up, I, we remembered what used to ha happen during uh, when we were small, and we understand the fact that our parents were really caring. I want to link that to Mike Guinness' issue. Mr. Speaker, there are some persons, there are some politicians that I have decided to call them kindergarten politicians. Mike, the INEC, as uh, an umpire in the electoral process in Nigeria, uh, they are playing the fatherly role. Mike Guinness' decision is just a way, a direct way of strengthening our institutions. We, in Nigeria, it's so sudden, Mr. Speaker, that 
we so give uh, regard and make some individuals so powerful more than institutions. I, I wonder where Nigeria will be if there is no regulating law, regulating activities in Nigeria. So, Mr. Speaker, we, in the midst of when my, some persons are criticizing, uh, litigating Mike Guinea, I will give thumbs up to Mike Guinea. We, it's very sad, Mr. Speaker, when we are clamoring for change, we are clamoring for a paradigm shift. But some persons are still comfortable with their body language and utterances. They are, it is really shows that they are comfortable the way things used to be. All right, normality. thank you. Thank we, you very much, Parliamentary. No, thank you for having me, Mr. Speaker. Let me give room for other people. Uh, in my solution, most of the states got a boy now. Thank you very much, uh, parliamentarian. So, hello, good morning. Welcome to the People's Parliament. Hello, hello good morning, yes. parliamentarian. Good morning. Thank you. Yes, it's following time. Go ahead, parliamentarian. To, yes, I want to bet you. Um, is your barrister, your bar the barrister that you call, he doesn't have a name. I had because, said we'll be um, speaking with Barrister Inibege Fiong. I guess you didn't join oh, us as a then. Yes. Because I did, not hear, I did not hear you calling me then. So when people are coming to talk, they should not come in, in as an illegal people. Let them, let them come, come in free. So no, that we can know no, and nobody know comes on the parliament as an illegal person. It was like an in because I did not hear his name. That's, that, that is probably it's because he didn't story. join us when we, we introduced him. So that, that that is not from us. <laughs> I, I was there. I was there. I followed you. I followed you. Uh, but the letting not come in as an illegal um, person. Let, let, we want to hear his name as always. Barrister so Nibe Fiong is no illegal person. <laughs> <laughs> He's a known phrase, a known voice. Thank you very much, Parliamentarian, for joining us. We appreciate your contribution this morning. Uh, let me quickly come to the issue of um, the APC presidential uh, candidate in the person of Ahmed Bola Tinibu. Uh, recall in 2003, we had a drug case uh, that surfaced on the internet coming from the FBI and the uh, DEA from outside the shows of Nigeria, alleging that uh, Tinubu was involved in a drug cartel uh, business and, of course, and every other issue that surrounds drugs. And then in 2015, um, prior to when he became the Lagos State Governor, the issue came up again, and um, he's been constantly being monitored by the foreign bodies, uh, FBI and DEA as well. And now, going back to 2022, and his emergence as a presidential flag bearer, the issue has surfaced itself again. And the question is, can someone who has been involved in a drug cartel ever quit drugs? That's the first question Nigerians are being asked right now. And should Nigerians contemplate voting such a person as their next president? I'll come to you directly, Mr. Emmanuel. Well, I, <laughs> this is very, uh, you see, you mentioned the times, you know, this has come up. Uh, before now so my question is my my take is uh, what did what happened when it came up this matter came up the first time what happened when it came up the second time until for me until it is proven you know by a court of competent jurisdiction that you know this man is convicted or has been convicted or it's been it's been cleared it's been it's been it's a it's a it's a it's a fact that he is involved in in such uh, dealings and has such cartel, my brother, I, I would not uh, want to uh, tow, you know, such land. But I, I am sure that you know the law is very, very clear on this, on this, on these issues. If he is, you know, involved, then Nigerians shouldn't even think of such person. So, but if it's not, uh, if it's not yet proven and, and and certified that that's, you know, that's the way it is, my brother. <laughs> Uh, for me, it, be, it remains uh, speculative, and and on such, I, I I would not I would not uh, I would not be fast to hit the nail on him, the, uh, despite the party difference. But of course, I know that Nigerians know we we are, Nigerians are not even thinking of 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 uh, of, uh, of him as as uh, coming twenty twenty three. So uh, so for him to be involved or not is not even an option. It's not even a problem. Nigerians know where they are going to. You know, Nigerians know that don't know know where their problem was. They know the solution to their problem, which is, uh, of course, the People's Democratic Party. So if there's no way anybody will sit down and begin to think 
of uh, it's so inconsequence. My brother, it's just like you taking Panadol all over stomach ache. I, I don't think it's right. Well, th th there has been later coming up from the, the United States Consulate, and this letter was signed by Kellum, and in the later, which was a response to petition pertaining to Tinibu's suitability to stand for re-election in the 2003 as the Lagos State Governor, the petition said that Tinibu, owing to his conviction in the United States for running a drug cartel, was not suitable to stand for re-election. But sadly, before this letter actually got to the Nigerian society, he had already assumed office as the governor of Lagos State, and so the immunity clause. So uh, after, was so, uh, so when and it after finished, that, no nobody took up the issue up until now. You see, but, but then let, let's look at the image. How this was? Let, let's say of a truth, he's been um, indicted of drugs in America, and then he emerges as Nigeria's president. Do you think the American society will be able to stand, or the American president and other world leaders will be able to stand shoulder to shoulder with Ahmed Bola Tinibu? It is, it, it, the time to do it is now. They should not wait until he's been, uh, until he, until election period. No, if they are sure of their claim, they should come out straight and say, this is who this guy is. This is what he did at this point. And of course, the law should take his course. Uh, 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 my, uh, if I may help you there. Um, all those things uh, uh, is not really our business. It's not our business. Uh, we are sitting down here with a no full field our hands. You know, you know, drug dealers are not in PDP at all. And uh, uh, PDP is a, a party that does not uh, work with drug dealers. Uh, so we don't know uh, how they operate. We don't know how drug. Uh, well, well, uh, well, we'll, 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 we'll quickly, you, we'll quickly move away from from. I think I'm getting to understand the end of vibes. <laughs> the next time that comes, you have to pay us for that. No, 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 but no, but because no, you, 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 but, no, but the truth is, yeah, you don't shifting. expect us to come like that. We don't come in. We give. We have to be giving now. You have to give. You have to start by giving to Planet X. We want to see the check. So no, we, before you decide to sign the check, <laughs> you have to sign the check before, speaker, we, before we move speaker, away. I just want to comment on um, Tinibu issue. My concern is that uh, this issue comes up every election time, mm. just like a mass solution say. So it's just uh, something I call, I want to borrow from my boss, political nuances. Mm -hmm. Because if it's something serious, it should be in court by now. And and from the report I read, which is not really on a good authority website, they are just a, a small small website. The report is simply that he only opened an account, allegedly opened an account that was used to lodge money, and after that money was uh, taken away. So it does not really show that he was involved in. It's just that uh, that account, but we cannot also rely on social media uh, things that comes up every time. For maybe for people do those things for traffic. Well, as far as social media is concerned, we also know that um, news that flies that are not real, we also are very careful of not taking such news. But this has been verified by the U.S. consulate in Nigeria with names and signatures all attributed to it. But let's talk to this parliamentarian. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the People's Parliament. Thank you, Mr. Good morning. Good morning, parliamentarian. Good morning, all the guests in the house. Good morning. It's Friday on a Monday morning from the journey. Fantastic. Go ahead, Friday. Mr. Speaker, let me simply thank your barrister, Barrister Libere, for standing by truth. And the Bible said the truth shall set you free. Mr. Speaker, they should leave Virginia alone. That is what I've been pleaded with a quite bold mind. They should leave Virginia alone. There's a lecture act. There's a lecture act. And as you said, 2022 is different from others. They should take a copy to know what is going on. We have these actors, political actors, who feel they can do undo. And I want to believe what they propose is come to fulfill because they don't want APC to have a candidate in the state. So they should leave it in alone, please, for God's sake. They should wait for, for us in the to attend them and uh, Stephen Drebo. Let the Kwaibo might remain calm and wait because I know very sure that us in the is in court with Stephen Drebo. And the court will decide who is the state chairman. Because as uh, the Barrister Kiminiwe has said, Senator Pablo was there as the Sheikh Grace giving his own speech before he left. I was there present. And I know we're there monitoring the exercise. So let us wait. 
the actors, they say they want to do one do. And I want to believe this time we'll put it in. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much, Parliamentarian. On that note, we'll quickly take some of the comments from our social media platform. Parliamentarian Etini Salah says, my take is on INEC expressing worry over vote buying. I think it's a good one, only if they will partner with the appropriate authorities to look inward to this matter and bring the perpetrators to book. As for Ahmed Bola, Tinibu money laundering and drug trafficking issue is a strategy used by politicians in order to disqualify someone from occupying a particular office. Coming from Parliamentarian Tini Salas. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the People's Parliament. Uh, good morning. My name is David. Go ahead, Parliamentarian. Thank you. Please, let me use my dad so that my people here can understand. Go ahead. Good morning. Who are you the millionaire number one? Who is the governorship aspirant? Who is the governorship aspirant in the APC requirement state here? That's number one, number two. I would like people to forget about all this problem around. I want people to concentrate on what the IMF uh, Electoral Act uh, provides for us. Please. All right, thank you very much, Parliamentarian, for joining us. I, I was hoping you were going to speak in your language, but you... Yeah, 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 <laughs> I was listening to you. Switch back to English. Well, uh, uh, I think INEC is the only person, or the APC will tell us who their flag bearer is. Mm. I'm not INEC, I'm not APC, mm. and we'll try to get them here to tell us. But Hello, I good morning. Welcome yes, to the People's yes. Parliament. Yeah, greetings to you, Mr. Speaker, and your guest. Emma, mm? I greet you. It's been a while. I greet you too. See me, though. Yeah. My name is Major Owa. I'm calling from Sudibu, the speaker. Go ahead, Parliamentarian. All right. And the speaker, I, I mean, let me just say something on this Eugenist uh, issue. I don't think that the man has done anything wrong. But uh, it is his action that makes some uh, government to be, you know, to be dumbfounded, maybe that he's he work, he working for the ruling party. For example, Mr. President, hey, Mr. Speaker, he would have he would have made that uh, statement, which he said that uh, that APC do not have a a candidate. I think that is where the problem lies. It's just like uh, maybe you go to the hospital and the doctor said that uh, my sister you die tomorrow. Uh, uh, what is the hope? You know the person might attack you, or maybe I have a I have a case now. For example, I put a lawyer, even though the lawyer knew that maybe I killed someone, the lawyer knew that I will lose the case. He will not open up and tell me, my brother, they will hang you. He has to follow due process at the end. He knew that I was going to lose, but he cannot put up and tell me that you are going to be killed. I don't know whether you understand me. So that is the problem that he made. He would not have made that pronouncement that APC will not have a candidate. That was very wrong. He would have just allowed the court to decide, even though he, he himself knew that APC will not have a candidate, but he wouldn't have just made that statement. Then finally, Mr. Speaker, I want to ask the, the good use of a quiet room state. Please. The youth, my lovely youth, during that protest, the people came back. Which son of a politician did you see at that uh, ground? I thought you only see them during the swearing of their parents. So, uh, for our uh, mothers, which uh, wife of a politician did you see in that ground that you people went? They said that you even have a uniform and a, a, a black and black. What about many of them that I pertained to? What about as uh, you were protesting your people high and you fell down? What will you tell God? There are some things that we should think. Then I allow any politician to use your head. Because right. of the, well, they give you 1,000 or 2,000. Thank you very much, Parliamentarian. We appreciate Thank your that. contribution this morning. And Parliamentarian Veronica Umo says, uh, the People's Parliament, good morning. Whether there is Mike again or not, Aquibon people would vote the man they want. Federal government should try and settle ASU strike. Today is 140 days of the ASU strike. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I feel like crying. I, I feel I sometimes I hope I, you know I just have to hold my emotions because I do not understand how you know a party, a, a people who come out to campaign and, and talk about governance, you know, when they have the instrument to solve this issue of ASU, ASU strike. They have refused to solve this issue and get our children back to school. But they are interested in politics, interested in governance. It's, it, I don't understand how people reason, Mr. Speaker. Hey, Dr. Matt Solution, it's painful. Did you watch uh, what uh, the former minister said, uh, Amechi said? Hey. He said, even if you are angry, 
uh, angry and vote for APC again. Can you so, imagine? <laughs> it simply shows that uh, their only interest is in it's in governance. It's, it's, now, it's in, now, now, it's in now, governance. Now, now, we will I get wonder how, we, a, how somebody can repeat a class when he has failed that class. Well, I, I think back in those days, uh, people who failed classes were meant to repeat those classes and um, could only move past it after they have been able to pass the exams. Well, let's talk to this parliamentarian. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the People's Parliament. Quite pathetic. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, parliamentarian. The guests in the studio. Yes, yes. Mr. Brown calling from you. Go ahead, parliamentarian. You see, I don't know why what is wrong uh, with our people in Africa with each I think the whole matter is, should, I think we should be quiet now. The king is doing his job. Then why couldn't, why couldn't APC settle its own the, the internal problem? And then people are just saying what they don't even understand. Look, they should leave that man. I think he's trying to do what is right. I'm not a politician by the grace of God, but the truth must be told. Then concerning what is going on, and see, the state governor uh, came in. I thank God for this. Different state governor will be having a right from the 31st. The civilian governor in Semen is introducing a to that which should be against a job syndrome. And then people are still going under the adopting. Wrong. That's why people are saying things or trying to defend things that they shouldn't. Now, the present governor, just not to, just to take them, because to chronicle all those who have been the governors, the indigenous governor in Ecuador, they've been trying to see what they can do to take us, uh, take us to the top. That's where we should be thinking. Of. Then the present governor introduced the Akada, then people there, they just still uh, remaining where they were. They don't really understand. That thing is spiritual. Dakada is spiritual. See what is written from Genesis to Revelation is Dakada. By the time you arrive like the prodigal son, you go to the top. We don't hear that prodigal son was all, was, was again mentioned as being prodigal. Instead, it was it was celebrated. The moment we truly Dakada, I tell us that God will take us to a height that we rule the world. But they, I don't know why our people are still dabbling themselves into things that that's not 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 essential. When, when you truly Dakada, God will instead bless you so that he makes you to become a, a celebrant. So that whoever hates you will be will be slapped by God himself. Mm. And then God wants to even be an eternal excellency, a joy, a joy of, uh, uh, you know, a, a joy of the many generations. By, by the time with Dakada, the people are still dabbling on mean things. That All doesn't right. make them... Thank you very much, stuff. parliamentarian. Me, we have to let you go at this point in time. Thank you very bless much for you, contributing. All right, uh, that's the last call we're going to take for today. And the last comment, Parliamentarian Brojohn says, the People's Parliament vote buying can be stopped if INEC uh, cautions against an agents of politicians and political parties not to poison the minds of voters and let the people know if a government can provide jobs, security, epileptic power supply can be solved and other issues across the Nigerian institutions. This will help us condel the issue. Thank you very much, Parliamentarian and Brojan, and all who have commented on our social media platform. I'm afraid that is the size of the comments that we can take. Uh, before we go, let me come back to you, Mr. Trafon, for your last take. Okay, Mr. Speaker, vote buying is an issue that uh, must be tackled, but, uh, but I feel uh, the National Assembly should maybe work on the bill again, the Electoral Act, to capture vote buying. And our people also, when they, we are given money, collect the money, but vote your your conscience. Then for uh, on the APC, Mike Igini and the law, uh, Mr. Speaker, everybody has spoken. The parliamentarians have spoken. The law has spoken. Everybody is on the side of Igini because he is acting in accordance with the Electoral Act. So those who, who, who fly with impunity from one party to the other, they could also move to other party if they space mm. and get a and get a nomination. Mm. Then let me just join with my brother uh, a mass solution on on talent development and issues about that. I want to say that our people are very, very uh, smart and creative. If you look down inside you, every acquired person is blessed with an idea. I remember when I finished school, I didn't have uh, something to do. And one thing that entered my head was, was social media, data. So I started blogging, and that time it was not very popular. But here we are, we are, it's now something that everybody wants to be a, an influencer. So Mr. Speaker, uh, I thank you for today and wish you a very great week.
Thank you very much. Let's come back to you, Mr. Yeah. Mano. For me, uh, your talent is your meal ticket. I keep saying this. Of course, uh, today we're measuring, featuring um, uh, on, you know, movie industry. But that doesn't mean that we are not also looking at um, other uh, craft or their talents. We, by God's grace, we are in talks with the uh, the owners of uh, Tiger Bar. But by every every month end, we should be having an open mic contest. You know, a talent hunt initiative. Also, with uh, last night, I was with the uh, MD of uh, Megati. Of course, he has also approved that same contest, uh, open mic contest. You know, to be done uh, once every month. So also, this is to help. You know, those who have talent in music and uh, 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 maybe acting, comedy, and all that. And then, of course, I want to thank uh, His Excellency the Governor for, you know, doing the things he knows how to do best, which is doing, which is changing the narrative in Akwaibo. And um, for you, Mr. Speaker, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you to all. Uh, everybody listening, and of course, uh, there's no way I will live without giving you what I have. If, if, in fact, as uh, Peter said, uh, what I have, I give unto you, and what I have, he said, No, my brother, a hey, boy, knocking okay, Jesus, amen. That is um, actually going to cost you two hundred thousand dollars, and that's not that's no money. One last, uh, <laughs> the last thing before we go, just thirty seconds. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, Acquire Bomb Film Industry is actually promoting morals, uh, doing good. A good uh, content and uh, uh, historical content promoting a quiet boom and we are very very proud of that and um, please come and join the industry have faith in the industry have faith in the present administration that has been doing so well for the industry uh, thank you very much a quiet thank you for this opportunity Go out there and do your PVC. Very important. Go out and do your PVC, please, so that you can partake in this coming election, so that uh, you can actually have a say in the next administration. In the last note, please, boy, no. God bless you. Jesus. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been a very fulfilling moment on today's plenary on the People's Parliament on Planet 101.1 FM. I'd like to appreciate all the parliamentarians who called in and make their contributions and apologize for the comments we could not uh, take for those who join us on a social media platform. Uh, it's been a wonderful moment having you. Let's do this again, same time, same station tomorrow. My name is Francis Edith, Mr. Speaker. Bye-bye for today.